This country was once part of Sudan, but gained independence after years of conflict, making it the youngest country in the world. Hello, welcome to Open Tierra. Today we are looking at South Sudan, a nation in East Central Africa. Join us as we explore its history, geography, and culture. South Sudan is a landlocked country located in northeastern Africa. It is bordered by Sudan to the north, Ethiopia to the east, Kenya to the southeast, Uganda to the south, the Democratic Republic of the Congo to the southwest, and the Central African Republic to the west. South Sudan is the newest country in the world, having gained its independence from Sudan in 2011 after decades of civil war. South Sudan occupies a total area of 619,745 square kilometers, or 239,284 square miles, making it larger than France in size. The capital and largest city is Juba, located in the center of the country. There are three main geographic regions in South Sudan. The first is the tropical swamp region along the White Nile River in the center of the country. This includes the Sud, one of the world's largest wetlands. The second region is the tropical savanna belt, stretching across the south and southeast parts of the country. This area has expansive grasslands and some woodlands. The third region is the hot and dry semi-desert area in the north and northeast. The terrain of South Sudan is largely flat or rolling plains, with some hills and mountains along the borders. The highest point is Kinyeti at 3,000, 187 meters or 1,980 feet above sea level located along the border with Uganda. The White Nile is the major river, passing through the Sud wetlands in the center of the country. South Sudan has a diversity of animal life, including many species unique to the East African savanna ecosystems. Large populations of elephants, giraffes, lions, leopards, and antelope can be found. The Sud wetlands also provide habitat for hippos, crocodiles, and migratory birds. However, recent civil wars have negatively impacted wildlife through poaching and habitat destruction. Efforts are being made to conserve and protect its wildlife. South Sudan faces several environmental challenges. These include deforestation for charcoal production and agricultural land, soil erosion, loss of biodiversity, and pollution. The country lacks an extensive environmental regulatory framework and institutions to address these issues. Developing more sustainable land management practices while balancing development needs will be an important challenge going forward. South Sudan is home to a diverse multicultural population consisting of various ethnic groups, languages, and religious affiliations. The total population amounts to around 10 million Xu according to World Bank data. There are around 60 major ethnic groups in South Sudan with the Dinka being the largest group making up around 35% of the population. Other major ethnic groups include the Nur, Chiluk, Azande, Bari, Kakwa, Kuku, Murle, Mandari, Didinga, Indogo, Baviri, Lendai, Anuak, Bongo, and dozens of others. The most spoken language in South Sudan is Dinka. Other major indigenous languages include Nur, Bari, Zande, Chiluk, and Otuho. English is the official language used for government and education, while Arabic is also used widely in the north. There are over 60 native languages spoken across the country. Most South Sudanese follow traditional indigenous religions. The majority of Christian South Sudanese are Roman Catholic, followed by Protestants like Anglicans and Presbyterians. Only a small minority of South Sudanese living in border areas are Muslim. South Sudan has a unique cuisine influenced by its diverse cultures and access to the Nile River. Staple ingredients include grains, vegetables, and meats. 
Here are signature dishes of South Sudanese cuisine. Kisra is a thin, soft flatbread made from sorghum or corn flour. It is cooked on a hot metal surface and often served with stews. Kisra is a staple carb consumed at most meals. Asida is a popular porridge made from sorghum or corn flour, cooked with milk or yogurt. It has a smooth, thick texture like porridge. Asida is often eaten for breakfast or any meal accompanied by sauce or honey. Ful medams is a staple dish across East Africa and Sudan. It consists of stewed fava beans seasoned with spices like cumin, garlic, and chili peppers. Onions, tomatoes, eggs, or meats are added. Ful is rich in protein. South Sudan has a long history marked by repeated attempts to forge a national identity and resist domination by Northern Sudan. The area that is now South Sudan was part of several powerful ancient kingdoms and sultanates like Sinar, Alwa, and Shaluk. These kingdoms interacted extensively with Egypt and traded on the Nile Valley. South Sudan later fell under Turco-Egyptian control in the 19th century. The Mahdist revolution in Sudan further changed power dynamics in the area during the late 1800s. In 1899, Britain and Egypt established joint sovereignty over Sudan and administered South Sudan together. This Anglo-Egyptian rule promoted more Arab culture, Islam, and the Arabic language in the north. The British prohibited Christian missionaries from operating in the Muslim north, but allowed them into the south. This contributed to the spread of Christianity in South Sudan. Here is an expanded explanation of the growing divisions between North and South Sudan and how it led to the civil wars. Southern Sudan was culturally and ethnically distinct from the North, with most Southerners following traditional beliefs and Christianity as opposed to the Islam practiced in Northern Sudan. The British administered the two areas separately, which over time exacerbated the political and cultural divides between the regions. When the British merged the two regions in 1946, it was deeply unpopular in the South. Southern leaders feared the imposition of Sharia law, Arabic language, and loss of regional autonomy. After Sudan's independence in 1956, Southern leaders accused the Khartoum government of reneging on promises of autonomy and ignoring the South's interests. Successive governments promoted Arab culture and Islam in the South, prompting revolts. The government retaliated violently, escalating tensions. In 1955, Southern army officers mutinied marking the start of the first Sudanese civil war between the South and North. Disputes over oil resources and revenues further drove the conflicts. The civil wars were partly a fight between the South's predominantly Christian and animist black African population against the Arab Muslim North ruling from Khartoum. After decades of devastation, the South ultimately attained autonomy in 2005 and voted for independence in 2011. But peace remains fragile as old wounds fester. In essence, unresolved historical grievances and festering divides between the diverse populations of North and South Sudan led to decades of civil war and conflict before the South seceded. As the world's newest nation gaining independence in 2011, South Sudan has had to build its economy almost from scratch after decades of civil war. While it faces huge challenges, it also has opportunities to grow. As of 2015, its GDP is around $12 billion according to World Bank data. South Sudan's economy relies overwhelmingly on oil exports, which make up around 60% of its GDP. It has around 3.5 billion barrels in proven oil reserves. While oil has fueled rapid economic growth of around 10 to 15% annually, this dependence also leaves the economy vulnerable to oil price fluctuations. Rampant corruption in the oil sector further dilutes its benefits. To diversify its economy, 
The country is trying to develop other sectors like agriculture, livestock ranching, and manufacturing. Around 80% of the working population is engaged in non-oil sectors providing livelihoods. But farming techniques remain traditional, and underinvestment hinders industrialization. Being a landlocked country, South Sudan lacks port access, making trade expensive. Only around 10% of its roads are paved hampering transportation infrastructure. Conflict and instability also severely disrupt economic activity and development projects. If South Sudan can maintain stability after its long conflict, experts project its economy could grow strongly. Its youthful population, oil reserves, and untapped agricultural potential offer promise. But the country desperately needs reforms, ethnic reconciliation, and massive investments to overcome economic hurdles. As the world's newest nation, South Sudan has faced complex geopolitical challenges in its foreign relations since gaining independence in 2011. Its history shapes how it engages with regional and global powers. South Sudan has a tense relationship with Sudan due to their long history of conflict before independence. Disputes over border demarcation, oil revenues, and rebel groups remain unresolved. However, it depends on Sudan's pipelines and ports for oil exports. The Intergovernmental Authority on Development, IGED, and African Union have been key players in facilitating peace talks between Sudan and South Sudan. The country joined these African blocs after independence, but tensions persist. The US, UK, and Norway were major backers of South Sudan's independence movement. They continue providing economic assistance and push for human rights reforms. However, Western leverage has limits given its authoritarian trajectory. China actively courts South Sudan as a source of oil, investing in its energy sector. China also sells weapons to its government. It exerts less pressure on human rights compared to Western states. If you enjoyed this video on South Sudan, you'll love this next one.